Hey guys, got a new project today. My wife wants a coat hanger in her living room. And instead of going to Menards and buying a coat hanger and just throwing it up on the wall, I thought, let's get creative and let's build something that uh, is kind of unique and nobody else, you know, is really going to do. So I got the idea from a couple different, you know, links and different things. And I'm kind of an old rustic guy and, and I like, you know, hunting and outdoor stuff, obviously. So I decided to take an idea of taking some old deer antlers, some milled lumber that I milled off of my, my Granberg sawmill, and I'm going to try and see if we could put together a little coat hanger that will hang about four coats on it and just see how that works out. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about it. Never done anything quite like this before. I'm just going to be working with a lot of different stuff. And working with hand tools, we'll be working with uh, you know cutting up the antlers, getting everything positioned right, and trying to give it that old rustic feel and that old rustic look that uh, you know you would want to have out of it. So, all right, stay tuned. Okay, so this is basically the concept here. This is what we have to work with. Um, I've had a few pieces of these right here. Um, I'm not a tree expert. I love log milling, and I don't know what half the trees are out there. Just don't know what they are. That's a study for you know another day. So basically, what I have is I have the bark on. It's all rough cut. This is some of the first stuff I ever milled. And it's not like the straightest stuff because, you know, I've learned a lot of different things about, um, you know, keeping my lumber stable. I also cut some raw lumber out of uh, basically a, lot, uh, a piece just like this and shorted it up just to kind of see if I wanted to use it for anything. Um, we'll just go ahead and set that off to the side. What I got for antlers is I have a matching set here. You know, there's a little buck here. He wasn't too big. Um, you know, I, always, I try to use every single piece the animal I can. And I have another one over here. I don't know where the other sticker went. It's probably probably lost somewhere. But basically all I need to do is make four hangers. I'm actually going to be cutting this down a little bit too to fit it to the wall. So what I'll end up doing is I'll end up cutting these antlers right here and this brow tine here that'll make a good hanger. You know so that'll sit somewhere like that. Cut that brow tine off there. And then what I'll do is I'll take this portion here and you know just minus that out also drill that that portion down as well and this will be a coat hanger so I've got a sticker that can make a coat hanger and if I this is a little small I'd rather just use that as kind of a you know side deal so but both antlers are almost identical to what I'll be able to use them for so I'll have I'll have one two three four and that's how it'll work it'll actually be a little short I think I'm taking about a foot off so First thing we got to do is we got to measure out, um, see what size of board we need, and we'll cut that board, this board down. And uh, at that point too, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to finish sand this because this is all just, you know, what's left from a crosscut uh, chainsaw, which you know is just devastating. And and uh, you know we need to have that smooth and pretty, and we're going to make that look nice. And I might even probably tone it all up and put some lacquer on this. I got a bunch of high traffic lacquer. I can really just put it right over top of that. That'll make it really pop. Um, but other than that, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to stain it. Um, I think the wood color has got a lot of character to it. It's a real, real pretty grain and it has some, you know, knots and different stuff and these uh, white lines along the bark edge. And, um, but the hearth itself is really nice and I like it. It's going to be cool. I think, I think it's going to turn out really nice. I mean, it'd be really great to have a, a chunk of walnut um, just didn't have any laying around. I've got some oak out back, but it's all really big stuff. So this is just kind of perfect for a coat hanger. So um, we may, even, you know, try to get creative with a few other things. Maybe write something in there. Um, we'll just see how much time I got and and uh, you know just how creative we want to get with it. So anyway, um, we'll get this stuff measured up. And we'll get it cut. Okay. So when you're dealing with lumber that's not square and you know you want to make some straight cuts on it you got to find you got to have some kind of template you got to have something that's gonna shore it up make it straight all that good jazz well I was kind of um, you know it's kind of just boggling my it was boggling my mind on how I was gonna do this and I kind of got to you know thinking after a while I was like well why don't I just use a straight piece of lumber as a template to create you know my straight cuts I know I'm kind of putting a lot into this here but um, you know I'm just going to so it's fun so what I'm gonna do is I want to get that straight cut well, I already have one end that I call my flush end right 
So I'm gonna match that in with the end of this board. I'm gonna measure down 32 inches here and here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a line across there, okay? So when I get that line across there, I'm gonna lay that other board on there, I'm gonna clamp it to here, and then what I will do is uh, make that straight line across that, and that, that'll be flush with the other end. Um, that's That was kind of what I saw was gonna be the best um, way to do this with what I have for tools. So what I'm gonna do is, just like any other deal, you're gonna do a chalk line. 32, and this one's not gonna go quite across. Thirty-two. And something I have learned over time, and I like using a, a number two pencil, and then I will uh, sand it down with a piece of sandpaper. Uh, that makes a lot better cuts. I've used some contractor pencils too. You can use those too, but it takes a lot more work. Number two just it's just so much closer right off the bat. So I'll do that there. Grab my handy dandy string. All right. Okay, we're gonna start this end. Get our little glass lined up. Looking pretty near good. heavy line perfect all right so what we'll do next is we'll clamp the, uh, the project board onto this template board and we will go ahead and get that going okay so we got the the board flush on this end back here we have our line snap in between here and we have the board sitting on it. you can see it's all you know, it's doing its own thing um, it's you know kind of carrying off that way um, so now what we have is is like basically like a line that we know we can use to uh, mar make our marks and I'd kind of like done another one earlier that I had just measured down from each side to see if I had the 32 32 and I was actually pretty darn close um, I was actually right on and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and correct these lines and get them as straight as we can like I said you know we're not we're not getting crazy with this we're gonna spend too much time doing this but this is kind of fun it's just kind of a a way to learn it you know get it in my head um, and just kind of you know learn a different skill here that's what it's all about learning something new every time you do something you don't learn something new every day you know, you're just kind of static. You're dead in the water, man. Boom. Oh. All right. So it was a little different from my line. I thought it was just too much of an angle, and I thought, man, you know, that measuring down just isn't going to work. But actually, I tell you what, it was real darn close. So that's another method. I I I just noticed. You know, I took a tape measure from this end, measured it down, marked it. Took a tape measure here, measured it down, marked it at 32 inches both and really actually got really close. It just had a little bit of wiggle on it and it was kind of varying about, you know, an eighth of an inch and I just, I didn't like it. I didn't want it to end up all, all janky so I wanted to actually shore it up and make this template real quick. It took me four minutes. So just something cool, you know, um, did that. Now we'll go ahead and cut it and get it shored up. All right, so what you can see here is pretty self-explanatory. Got the uh, antler here. Um, got it, you know, go ahead and really lock that sucker down. Um, you know, God love clamps. So those things are the lifesaver, man. They're just the only way you're going to get a straight cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this off here at the brow tine, just above the brow tine. And so like I said, we got a coat hanger here. And then this is also going to be a coat hanger, but we got to get them separated. And we're going to have to clean everything up. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this uh, antler in half and we'll see how it turns out. Alright. 
So, coat hanger one, coat hanger two. And that's how it'll sit. Coat will go right over top of that. Coat will go right over top of that. You can't argue with that. That's pretty cool. All natural. So, all right. Well, first ones are cut. We're going to have to square a bunch of these off. I'll show you that in a little bit. How we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and cut the other one too. So this was part one of the coat hanger project that we started. And basically what we got done was the antlers cut, the um, raw lumber all sized up and ready to go. Um, part two is going to be actually covering the um, finishing of the board, the finishing of the antlers, mounting everything together, doing a lacquer finish, and uh, any other finishing touches that I may have in store for this project. So you're definitely not going to want to miss this. Stay tuned for part two.